I don't know if you've seen online some uh, courses or kind of almost get rich quick type schemes. Uh, and what they do is they promise to teach you how to find people who have unclaimed funds to track them down and reunite them with their funds and collect a percentage for yourself. What I want to share with you today is the legal pitfall that if you're trying to do this, you might fall into. The courses don't teach about this. And, you know, it can get you sued. It, it can get be worse than that. And if you're trying to get your private investigator's license, here's, here's a real kicker for you. It can get you banned from ever getting your private investigator's license. Hi, this is Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com and the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, which is premium private investigator training from someone who's been there and done that. This is one of the things I taught in an early course I have. I, I don't sell this particular course anymore, but I really felt it was important and feel it's important to share with you this bit of information. Here's the overall view of what these unclaimed funds courses try to teach you, and it revolves around skip tracing or finding missing people. And this is a skill you may already have, you may already be quite good at it. It was probably the first skill I developed really, really well, even before I had my PI license. But what happens is companies, maybe a bank has an account that's been inactive for too long and they're trying to get in touch with the person who has the, the funds in that account. And it can be modest, it could be $37, it could be $3,700 or more, but they, they try to return it to the rightful owner. But when they can't, and this happens with companies who are giving rebates, this happens with retirement accounts, all sorts of things. When they can't re reunite people with these, these funds that they haven't claimed, they turn them over to the State Unclaimed Funds uh, Bureau. Uh, sometimes it's not bureau, it's division or something like that. A lot of times it's run through different divisions of the state, maybe Secretary of State's office, Department of Commerce, things like that. But somewhere your state probably has, most states do, this unclaimed funds uh, department. And what citizens can do is you can look through by name and see if you have any uh, unclaimed funds coming to you. And this has become much, much easier over the years, especially with the advent of the internet. No longer do you have to mail off a letter and request the information or go down to the office and have it checked for you. You can check right online to see if there's unclaimed funds for you. Just type in your name. So what these courses try to teach you is you go online, you find unclaimed funds, and you're really kind of looking for the larger ones, right? The, the $3,700, $5,000, $10,000 unclaimed funds. And those are harder and harder to find because more and more people are doing this. It's easier and easier. But they suggest you find these unclaimed funds, look at who they're due to, and then skip trace that person, find that person, and send them a letter, a proposal that you know where there's some unclaimed funds for them, and that for a percentage, you will help them reunite. You'll send them the forms that are necessary and, and whatnot. Now, many times this can be legal and maybe even helpful. There are, there are people who would just, yes, do the paperwork for me or help me out with this. I don't want to mess with it. But in addition to this being a more difficult way to make money because people can do it themselves so easily now, you run into the problem of in order for it to be profitable for you, you have to collect a kind of a decent amount of money most of the time. What percentage of that unclaimed fund you consider worthwhile to do all the work of finding this person and reuniting them with the fund, that can vary. And if it's a very large fund, if it's a $10,000 fund, then maybe 10% uh, finder's fee that you get $1,000, well, that could be quite worth it, right? The problem is a lot of these funds are much smaller, maybe say $200, $280, something like that. If you're reuniting someone with a $280 unclaimed fund and only getting 10%, you're getting $28. That's probably not worth any of your time, and if you used any paid mechanisms, uh, an online database that you pay for, or even if you run down to the courthouse to pull some papers and that parking and time, it's probably not worth it for you to do it for $28. So you sit and say to yourself, uh, as is wise to do, what makes this business worthwhile to me? And you might say, well, 30% seems fair and now, now it's worth me doing the work. I have no problem with that. Charge what you're worth. Charge enough money to turn a profit. However, here's the kicker. Here's the thing that nobody is telling anyone out there. They're just trying to sell their courses or even teach it free online. Even worse, if, if you're doing nothing but learning free stuff online, really take it with a grain of salt. I, I think here uh, at Shadow Anyone, 
yeah, I've been here for five and a half years, almost six years now, putting out videos. You can measure over the years. Yeah, this is this is good information. This is stuff that holds up over the test of time. I'm not slamming you with advertisements at the end of the videos or at the bottom of the screen. None of that kind of stuff. It's just measure who you're learning from so that you get trustworthy information. But if you're trying to learn things strictly for free online, you could be missing some important things. Here is the missing link for you with these unclaimed funds. Some states cap the percentage at which you can collect a, a portion of a finder's fee. Real world example, one state I know of caps it at 10%, which does seem reasonable to me, but you know it may really affect your ability to turn a profit. And if you don't understand the cap that your state places on, uh, finders fees for unclaimed funds that can really bite you because you're now committing a crime if you're charging more than that percent that they allow as someone who's trying to get their private investigators license this can be really really problematic because some states for real for sure I guarantee you have a provision in their requirements to be a private investigator that you never have a previous infraction for committing unlicensed investigative services I'm going to say that again. You cannot, in some places, get a PI license if you have an infraction or a conviction for doing uh, unlicensed investigative work. So if you're doing unclaimed funds work, you think you're above board, but you haven't done a deep enough research and you find yourself coming afoul of this uh, percentage rule that the state has established, there's an infraction using investigative uh, tools and techniques, providing investigative services, you could argue, and that'll ban you from getting your license for life. You see, the places that I know that have that infraction, there's no time limit on it. How do you avoid this? You really vet the information you're learning for free. Make sure that it's trustworthy, it's coming from an experienced expert, preferably somebody who's done this before. If you do decide to take the next step and get paid training on something, whatever course it might be, make sure that that course is uh, taking good care of you and providing you with good solid complete information kind of a little tattletale that'll let you know if it's worthwhile or not do they have a money-back guarantee and more importantly how is it structured because there are a lot of online courses that'll give you a six-day money-back guarantee doesn't help you a whole lot if they're trickling out the information to you uh, maybe it's a 10 or 12 week course and if you're trying to learn say uh, about security services I saw this one recently and being a, a security guard provider or just a better security guard you know your first week of lessons might be history of security and basics of appearance and how to appear professional well that that doesn't hardly help you at all and you have to make a decision on whether or not to request a refund that early in the course you're looking at those lessons that you know are coming up like uh, verbal commands uh, or command authority you're looking at lessons that are coming up like how much authority do you have you're looking at future lessons that include use of force those are the things that you're really interested in and maybe need to know a little more specifically knowing the history of security work and understanding that it comes from uh, common law and the Magna Carta that's very good to know but it doesn't really tell you about the rest of the course and boom you're on the hook so it's got a weak guarantee so when you're deciding uh, when you're trying to learn something yeah use the free resources online use them with a grain of salt evaluate them and when you decide that you do need to get paid training use some of these check marks as far as a solid guarantee and make sure that you're getting exactly what you want and you're not going to get stiff I'm going to give you just a little piece of advice here that I give you every week, but if course creators would follow this advice, you wouldn't have anything to worry about. Unfortunately, you can't trust the other guy to always follow this piece of advice. I encourage you, follow it at all times yourself, especially, well, in business, with your family, in any aspect of your life. I'd like to, like to suggest that and remind you, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.